Hey everyone, Christopher Paolini here with another crispy writing tip. Today's writing tip is on the relative cons, pros and cons of self-publishing versus traditional publishing. Now this is a huge topic and I obviously can't cover all of the ins and outs of this, but I'm going to try to touch on a, some of the main points and hopefully this will be of some help to you, whether you're just starting out in your career or you have an established career and you're considering self-publishing with one of your future works. There are a lot of reasons to self-publish and a lot of pros and cons, so let's get into it. First up, I'm going to talk about some of the different types of self-publishing because there are a lot of ways that you can get your work out into the world. And after I'm done talking about the different types, I'm going to talk about what might what you might want to do and why you might want to choose one of these paths. And then we'll talk about traditional publishing a little bit at the end. So first up, the different types of self-publishing. The oldest and what used to be the only version of self-publishing was to actually print physical books. And you could do this in one of two ways. You could go to uh, an actual printer, bring them a manuscript that you had typeset, whether by hand or on a computer, and you could get a physical book printed, whether hardcover, softcover, mass market paperback, you know, whatever, you could get it printed. And you pay for that out of pocket. The other way of doing this was to work with uh, what's called a vanity press or a vanity publisher. These are publishers that uh, don't approach you, you approach them and you pay them to publish your book. They sometimes offer a whole range of services. Those can include editing, they can include cover design, some form of promotion even. And those have existed for a while and continue to exist. One thing you have to be aware of, and, and it's unfortunate that I have to mention this, but it does bear mentioning, is that there are some rather sleazy, fly-by-night uh, vanity press companies. Now, there are plenty of perfectly respectable ones, and you could have a great experience working with them, but unfortunately, there are a number of these companies that do prey on unsuspecting writers. And the way they prey on them is by offering contracts that have horrible, horrible financial terms, as well as restricting your copyright, the copyright to your work. And sometimes they even use the names of established authors to try to promote their services, so-called services. Uh, I actually had this experience where someone contacted me and said, you know, hey, this company is using your name to uh, try to get people to sign up for their um, publishing services, essentially. You know, is this genuine? Did you endorse this product? And the answer is absolutely not. And looking into the company, it was basically a scam. So you have to be very careful. Do your research, you know, go on the internet, look at reviews, look at people's experiences, and also look at what's industry standard in terms of contracts. Uh, when it comes to working with, let's say, a vanity publisher. Just to be clear, when you work with a traditional publisher, they pay you. They might not pay you a lot, but they pay you. Vanity Press, you're paying the publisher. And there can be a number of reasons to do this, uh, why you would want to go this direction. We'll talk about that after I'm finished with the types of self-publishing. So, originally, to recap, we had uh, going to a printer, getting physical books printed or going to a vanity press or a small press and having them design do some design work, maybe some promotion work, and then again, they have the books printed, and then you usually would have to store those books in some way and then figure out how to distribute them and how to sell them. Okay, next up are, uh, is sort of an intermediate step between that and ebooks, uh, which is called print on demand. Now, this is the, sor the, the form of self-publishing that my family and I used. Uh, it's really, really... Uh, useful when you're a small time, small fry, so to speak. Uh, print on demand is exactly what it says. Uh, you, you, you go to the printer and you set up a file with them. And uh, if they're a reputable place, they will uh, get an ISBN number for your book, or you can get an ISBN number. You can register the book. Uh, the book can be listed on Amazon and other retailers, but no stock is actually printed. It's only, you only, they only print the books that are ordered. Now, if you yourself can order books, you know, you could order 50 books, 100 books, and again, stick them in your garage. But for the most part, you'll only be printing what is actually ordered. This keeps overhead down, uh, extremely useful for uh, someone who's starting out and doesn't have a massive amount of resources, and, and also when you don't know what the commercial appeal of your property might be. 
Uh, the downsides of print on demand is that uh, it costs more per book than if you're doing a traditional print run. Uh, the quality is maybe not quite the same because the printing processes are different. And that's, that's about it for the downsides on that front. Lastly, we come to ebooks. Now, of course, all of these methods can be combined. You could have one book that you do a traditional print run for, that you're also selling via print on demand, and that you also do as an ebook. Ebooks did not really exist when I was starting out, and that has been the biggest change in the market since Aragon was published. Ebooks can come in a number of different formats, and of course, people were doing electronic fiction back in the 90s and early 2000s. There was HTML fiction, there were even ebooks of a sort. But the readers didn't exist, and I mean readers as in the, the physical reading devices. There were no iPads, no Nooks, no Kindles, so that was a problem. No, no iPhones, no smartphones. Nowadays, though, there's a huge market for this, and a lot of self-published authors work almost completely with ebooks, uh, whether with Amazon or elsewhere, and you can make some good money doing this. I still feel like it's good to have a physical copy of a book, even if you are offering an ebook alternative. But if that's the only direction you go, if you just choose to work with the ebooks, you know, you're going to lose some sales, but maybe not as, certainly not as much as you would have in years past. Ebooks uh, are open to piracy in ways that physical books aren't. Uh, no, no book, of course, is protected from that, but uh, that might be something that you would want to consider. Also, now one of the big pros in terms of self-publishing is freedom, essentially. You bypass the gatekeepers of the industry, of the publishing industry, and you can publish whatever you want. Whatever subject material, in whatever presentation that you feel is appropriate, you can do that. And that can be really, really useful uh, for whatever reason. Also, you can uh, target a very a smaller niche audience. You know, if you if you have a book, in fact, I, I have a friend I know who did this. Who he he wrote a book on fly fishing in a certain number of creeks here in Montana, and the audience for that fly fishing book is fairly small, not negligible, but fairly small. It's a very dedicated group of fly fishing enthusiasts uh, from around the world who want to know about you know what it takes to fly fish in these creeks. If you publish that traditionally, you're probably going to lose money. You know, it's not going to sell tens and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of copies. But by self-publishing, it turned a profit, sold a decent number of copies, did really well for what it is. So if you have a niche product, whether it's, you know, an academic work or a piece of fiction, poetry, something like that, again, self-publishing might be, you know, might be the way to go. So freedom, as I said, is one big reason to go with self-publishing. Another one is financial. You make more per book when you self-publish because you're not paying for the services of a publisher. And that could be a real incentive for you, especially if you're selling lower volume, you know, fewer copies, you get a bigger chunk of the pie. Um, ebooks, you know, ebooks don't sell for as much, but you can sometimes make that up on volume or just by publishing a lot more works <laughs> per year, which is a, va you know, a valid approach. So financially, that's something to keep in mind. It may not actually end up earning you that much more money in the long run if you end up having to duplicate the services that a publisher provides in order to get your book to sell the way you want. That is, if you're having to pay for publicity, if you're having to pay for distribution, uh, there are companies called book packagers which uh, can essentially act as a liaison between you and the distributors to get physical copies out uh, and also to help promote and handle fulfillment. Uh, fulfillment on physical copies is a real pain in the arse. So, you know, you don't want to be doing large volume fulfillment for thousands and thousands of books. Been there, done that, it turns your house into a warehouse. It's a good problem to have, but it's unsustainable unless you really devote your whole life to it. Uh, another pro of self-publishing is if you just enjoy being in control. You know, this is related to the freedom aspect. If you are business-minded, if you enjoy learning things and challenging yourself and enjoy publicity and talking and, and just getting yourself out there and making things happen, then self-publishing can be uh, a real uh, fun experience 
in that sense. Of course, if you are that type of person, you're probably want, going to want to leverage your self-published work into something bigger, which is probably why you'll end up a traditional publisher down the road. Another big uh, pro for self-publishing is that self-publishing a book can allow you to prove the financial potential of your material to a traditional publisher. So if you uh, sell 10,000 copies of a self-published book, that's proof then that you know there's a market for your stories. Now, a downside of this, and this is gonna tip over into some of the cons now, is that if you've sold 10,000 copies of your book or more, the publisher might look at that and say, you know, hey, you already tapped out the market for this book. We're not gonna sell another 10,000 copies. You know, we might sell another couple hundred, but you know, we, we don't think this is gonna keep selling. In that case, you know, you've lost a little bit, but you haven't lost that much because you still have proven that your work has a market. And so when you write your next book, the publisher is gonna be willing to take a look at that or more willing to look at it than if you hadn't had your self-publishing experience. Okay, so some of the other cons of self-publishing. Um, I mean, the big one is there's definitely a bias against self-publishing. It isn't often seen as very prestigious, and part of that is because of a perceived lack of quality to the work. You know, self-published books don't usually get the same editorial attention. Now, that goes back to the freedom aspect. That might be something that appeals to you. You might not want to fight with an editor over whatever your subject material is. But not having an editor is probably going to um, have an effect on the you know, finished product. Uh, my own experience has been that editing is incredibly useful. I've learned a huge amount from it. And were I to self-publish a fiction book now, I would go out and hire the best editor I could find. Uh, probably more than one, because there is story and character and world building, building editing. And then there's very technical copy editing and line editing. And editors don't always do both of those. So that, that comes to the other big con, which is that all the services that a large publisher, traditional publisher would be providing for you, you're going to have to provide for yourself. And if you really want to do this well, you're gonna to have to invest time and money. You're gonna to have to learn a lot of new skills. And maybe you have some family members who can help you or some friends, and then you're basically forming your own little publishing company. But if it's all on you, you're gonna to have to do a lot of stuff. And that stuff you're doing is gonna be time not spent writing. So ultimately you'll have to balance that and say to yourself, is it worth it? You know, if, if I go with a traditional publisher and I sell, you know, half as many books, but I can write my next book twice as fast, is it worth it? There are a lot of things to think about here. And of course, if you do have a story or a book that is, um, you know, going to really capture people's attention, then being with a traditional publisher might be worth it. Another form of self-publishing I forgot to mention earlier is you can just serialize things on the internet. You know, you can release things for free on your website or elsewhere. I believe that's actually what Andy Weir did with The Martian. He serialized it on his website and it got so much attention and was so popular that, you know, he got a traditional publishing deal with Random House and I believe it was Random House, uh, Del Rey. It, and that went so well that he's continued with traditional publishing. So there are options, but they all have, you know, advantages and disadvantages. Now, there are a number of authors these days, um, and I do mean authors, even though they're not published traditionally, they are authors who are making very, very good livings publishing, uh, you know, eBooks on a ridiculously fast pace, you know, just churning them out, sometimes, you know, one or two a month. Then the books aren't very long, and of course they don't get the same editorial oversight that, or attention that you would hope for nor with a normal book but uh, they're making a really good living providing their audience with the sort of stories that they want to read. They're able to do that because they're able to produce content so quickly on subject material that's interesting to people, and sometimes they even have entire teams of writers. I know of at least one instance where this is true. Uh, they, there's a whole team of people who are helping produce this material, and it's just churned out consistently, and um, it works very, very well for them. So. Those are all things you need to keep in mind. Now, with a traditional publisher, they can do a lot of things for you that it would be very difficult to replicate with self-publishing. And I think I've probably made that point already. But just to reiterate, uh, you will get editorial oversight uh, and collaboration, I should say. You know, it's not forced upon you. You will 
get some degree of publicity. That's going to depend on their investment in the book, but you'll get some degree of publicity, and it might be a lot of publicity. You'll have a whole team of industry professionals that you can work with and that you can interact with and who hopefully can answer your questions and help guide you into promoting and, and growing your fan base. You know, promotion as a self-published author is hard. You know, I was, my book was appropriate for schools, so I was cold calling schools and school librarians, trying to get them to let me come into the school to do presentations, which um, fortunately worked out for me. That was actually the best way I found to sell books self-published was in schools, not bookstores and not libraries. But that's not going to be appropriate for every book. So <sighs> balancing all of that is a challenge. And even though it is easier to get published now than, it, than at any other time in history, because so many people are getting published, it's difficult to stand out from the crowd. And that is, there, there is no easy answer for that. If there were, every publisher would make every book a bestseller and every self-published author would be selling a million copies of their, you know, of their novel or nonfiction text or whatever it might be. So this is, this is the difficult part. Now, it's not an either or proposition. You can mix and match. There are authors like Brandon Sanderson, who he has self-published a number of his short stories and he self essentially self-publishes some of his special editions that he does with his books. That works really well. You know, he goes back and forth. And then of course his large novels, his full novels, are um, in the traditional publishing world. There are a lot of authors who are going back and forth. Maybe they'll self-publish an ebook of, you know, a novella or a short story or something that's out of print. They'll bring it back as an ebook they publish themselves, and uh, you know, they can actually find some readers that way. I think Kevin J. Anderson was actually doing that with some of his out of print books, and that's he was essentially acting as a publisher for a while with his uh, his books and then other people's books also. That can be really, really worthwhile for you as an author. So you can mix and match. You know, I would totally consider self-publishing for the right project. Uh, you know, there are a number of projects where I absolutely wouldn't consider self-publishing. You know, if I write another book set in the world of Aragon, I'm not going to self-publish that. that. That would be shooting myself in the foot because for me to get that book out to the readership that I think it would have and deserve, is going to take the resources of a major company. So those are all things you need to take into consideration when, when thinking about this. But uh, mixing and matching can be really, really powerful, and it's something that publishers are more open to these days. Now, with ebook rights, uh, you can sometimes keep those to yourself if you want to and do something different with them while your book is getting published with a traditional publisher if you're in that sort of a situation. But that's something you'd have to talk about you know, with, your, with an agent or um, with the publisher or themselves. Now, one thing I want to say is if you are self-publishing and you're going to work with a vanity press or you're going to work with any company that's going to do some service for you and there is a contract and if that contract has anything to do with your rights, whether that's, you know, royalty rates, your copyright, you know, the publication rights, anything like that, you really should have an entertainment lawyer look at it. Now that might feel like an unnecessary cost when you're starting out as a self-published author and, you know, maybe, maybe it's money you don't feel that you really have, but I'll, I'm going to tell you that not having a lawyer, especially one who's familiar with the publishing world, look at your contract is is a risk there's just no way around it it is a risk and especially if you don't have an agent who's familiar with the terms and and what is industry standard and what isn't now you can do a lot of that research yourself i would recommend doing that so you at least know what the contract should say but you have to be very very careful with that so you don't sign some contract and then you know a year later realize hey i'm getting half of what i should off that royalty rate and there's no way for me to cancel this contract or buy out of it or it's you know and it's never going to revert back to me you don't want to end up in that sort of a situation uh, especially if you know your first book is your best-selling book because that has happened that has happened to a lot of authors where you know you have a breakout book and it was signed under less than ideal circumstances. But that said, we all make the best choices we can given the circumstances, so don't beat yourself up too much if um, later on you learn something that you wish you had known. You know, we make the best choices we can given the information we have. So anyway, those are my, uh, my tips, and uh, that's, that's my sort of overview of 
Self-publishing and traditional publishing as how they relate to each other. Hopefully that was of some help. Uh, if you are interested in a little more in-depth look into all of this, uh, Brandon Sanderson does have a series of writing lectures that he did at BYU, and they're posted up on his YouTube channel. One of the lectures, uh, it's fairly near the end of the, the whole series, is devoted to traditional public, excuse me, self-publishing uh, and traditional publishing, but mostly self-publishing, and there's probably some useful information there as well that I haven't covered today. So anyway, again, hope that was of some help. Go forth, be awesome. I'll be back soon.